Hello everyone, welcome to Power Electronics. In this session, I'm going to discuss the step up chopper operation. A step up chopper is a static device whose average output DC voltage is greater than its input DC voltage. An arrangement for the step up chopper can be seen as shown in the slide here. This arrangement consists of an inductor in series with the supply voltage that helps the output voltage to increase. I'm talking about this inductor here. The chopper switch can be implemented using any of the power devices such as a power BJT, power MOSFET, SCR, IGBT, etc. The diode D1 is used to make sure the power transfer is from the source to load only. It also prevents damaging of the source from load current. The output voltage can be varied by turning on and off the chopper switch at regular intervals. When the chopper switch is closed for a time T1, energy is stored in the inductor and hence the inductor current rises. This will cause an EMF to be induced at the inductor. During this period, no current will flow through the load and hence the value of the load current will be zero. The voltage across the inductor is then given by VL equals L into DI by DT. Assuming continuous load current operation, the initial value of the inductor current is denoted as capital I1 and the final value of the inductor current is denoted by capital I2. This we are shown in the inductor current waveform here. You can see the initial current is capital I1 and the final current is capital I2. If the switch is open for a time T2, the energy stored in the inductor is transferred to the load through diode D1 and the inductor releases energy stored in the previous period. This also means that the back EMF induced at the inductor reverses its polarity causing the voltage across the load to be the sum of the supply voltage Vs and the back EMF induced in the previous period. Looking at the current waveform for the inductor, we note that this is the time duration T1 over which the switch is closed and this is the time duration over which the switch is open. At the beginning of the time duration T1, the initial current of the inductor is assumed to be I1 and at the end of the switch close operation, the current will rise from I1 to a steady state value of I2. When the switch is open, as we already have discussed, the inductor loses its energy and therefore the inductor current will fall. However, it should be noted that the current through the inductor cannot fall instantaneously to zero. Rather, it decays exponentially as shown here. Due to this behavior of the inductor, it will force the current through the diode D1 and load for the entire time period of T2. Therefore, you can see here the inductor current exponentially falls. However, it will never fall to zero. So, we say the inductor current starts to reduce from the initial value of I2 and reaches a final value of I3. Now, since we have assumed the continuous load current operation, the load current I3 at the end of the chopper open is equal to I1 which is at the beginning of chopper being closed. The peak to peak ripple current of the inductor which is represented here by delta I can be given by delta I equals Vs divided by L into T1. And the instantaneous output voltage is given by V0 equals Vs which is a supply voltage plus the voltage due to the inductor that is L into delta I by T2. Now we have previously written an equation for delta I. So I am going to take the RHS of equation 2 and substitute in place of delta I here. So that will be L into Vs T1 divided by L into T2. I cancel L in the numerator and denominator. This will be Vs plus Vs into T1 by T2. When I take Vs common, it will be 1 plus T1 by T2. This can also be written as Vs into delta i whole divided by 1 minus k where k is the duty cycle of the chopper operation. Now from equation 3 we note that the voltage across the load can be stepped up by varying the value of the duty cycle k 
and the minimum value of the output voltage is equal to Vs and that occurs when the value of the duty cycle K is 0. However, the chopper cannot be switched on continuously such that K equals 1. For values of K tending to unity, the output voltage becomes very large and is very sensitive to changes in K as shown in the graph here. Please note, the x axis here is the duty cycle and the y axis is V0 divided by V in which is equals to Vs. So, from the graph we can see at higher values of K, the value of V0 by Vs is almost very steep. In fact, it becomes quite vertical and therefore, the value of K should never be allowed to reach unity. Coming back to equation 3, we note that the minimum value of the instantaneous output voltage is Vs and the maximum value will depend upon the value of k. However, what is very interesting to note here is that the instantaneous output voltage is always greater than the input supply voltage. Therefore, when we compute the output voltage in an average sense, the output voltage will be greater than that of the input voltage. This principle can also be applied to transfer energy from voltage source to another as shown in the figure 4 here. The working principle of this circuit can be understood by splitting the operation into two modes and the equivalent circuits for these modes are shown in figure 5 here. The inductor current for mode 1 is obtained by applying KVL to the circuit for mode 1 which will give us Vs equals L into di1 by dt. We will write that as equation 4 here. Now, we will solve equation 4 for I1 of t to obtain I1 of t equals Vs divided by L into t plus capital I1 where I1 is the initial current for mode 1. We know that during mode 1 the current must rise and the necessary condition for this is given by di1 by dt is greater than 0. Or you can also imply the same by saying the supply voltage should be greater than 0. So, when you come back to the mode 1 circuit here, when the value of Vs is greater than 0, the inductor will start storing energy. That is what we imply here. So, the necessary condition for mode 1 is either di1 by dt is greater than 0 or Vs is greater than 0. Coming back to the circuit for mode 2, once again we will apply KVL to obtain. I2. So, Vs equals L into di2 divided by dt plus the battery which is E. Let us write this equation as Vs equals to L into di2 by dt plus E. Once again solving equation 7 for I2 we get I2 of t equals Vs minus E divided by L into t plus I2 where I2 is the initial current for mode 2. For a stable system, the current in mode 2 must fall because in mode 2, the chopper switch is open and therefore, the inductor is now losing its energy which means that the energy is now being transferred to the other DC source. Therefore, the necessary conditions for the current I2 to fall in mode 2 can be written as di2 by dt is less than 0 or the supply voltage has to be less than the DC source at the other end. Now, if the condition in equation 9 is not satisfied, the inductor current would continue to rise and an unstable situation would occur. Therefore, the conditions for permissible potentials of the two voltages are given by 0 less than Vs less than E. So, if and only if this equation is satisfied, energy can be transferred from the source to the other DC source. Also, equation 10 indicates that the source voltage Vs must be less than the voltage E to permit transfer of power from a fixed voltage source to a fixed DC voltage at the other end. One of the best examples of this particular application is in electrical braking of DC motors where the motors operate as DC generators, the choppers permit transfer of power to a fixed DC source or to a rheostat. Well, with that we come to the end of this session. In this session, we have discussed the principle of operation of a step-up chopper.
we also learned that the step up principle can be used to transfer energy from a supply to a battery well with that i end this session i hope you like this video if you do kindly like and subscribe to my channel for more information on power electronics thank you for watching have a good day